Uh, you brought up Judges chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. And what I got out of this was negative pressure to conform is a sign. Mm -hmm. Negative pressure to conform is a sign. Yes. And all of us have been in situations where some sort of a force or authority has exuded an, an enormous amount of pressure on you to make your spirit like cringe up inside. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting out of this is when you feel this oppression within your spirit, that's a sign that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. That this negative pressure, assuming it's not coming from Yahweh for something you've really done wrong, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when Satan is coming and he wants you to succumb to this pressure that's coming on you. When you feel that, that's a sign it's coming from a source you need to recognize. Mm -hmm. And you need to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and read in Judges 16 through 18. It says, And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her, this is talking about Samson, right. um, her words, and pressed him so that his soul was vexed with much discouragement unto death. Now, this is not something you would think about as Samson. Uh -uh. This is a guy who carried the gates of the city, I estimate, somewhere between 16 and 20 miles. Uh -huh. He carried the gates of the city, and they couldn't kill him. <laughs> and that's because if you understand blood covenant, mm -hmm. threshold covenant law, mm -hmm. you know, even back then they, resp they respected that. So when he came to the gates of the city... He knew what they wanted to do. So as long as he picked up the gates of the city and he stayed in that threshold, he was protected by the gates of the city. And he walked all the way. I, maybe I'll put it in the video uh, on the map to show how far he walked mm -hmm. to a hill. Mm -hmm. Looking at Hebron, I think it was. Um, I think that's where it was. I don't remember exactly, but I'll see if I can put it in. And uh, can you imagine walking with the gates of the city? And all these guys are around you. They want to kill you and they can't kill you. You know, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. But anyway, my point is, is that you don't think in terms of a woman vexing a big guy like this with this much power that he wants to die. Mm -hmm. But you know what Solomon said? It's better for a man to dwell on the roof of his house than inside the house with a nagging wife. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I think all men can empathize with that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, or the other one, what does it say? Um, uh, the nagging of a wife is like a continual dripping of a faucet of water. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Solomon, he's too much. All right, verse 17, let's get back to this. Mm -hmm. That he told up front and boldly her all his heart mm -hmm. and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head for I have been a Nazarite as a consecrated prince like, as an unpruned vine, that's mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, to Elohim from my mother's womb. I, If I am shaven, bald as laid to waste, then my strength of firmness and vigor will leave me, and I shall become weak and worn down with affliction like any other man. When Delilah lag, uh, languishly with feebleness and oppression, which is interesting, mm -hmm. Because she's oppressing him, which means she has an oppressing spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he finally gave in to this. Saw that, you know, he wasn't giving in to all the warriors that want to kill him, but he gives in to a woman that's got a spirit of oppression. Uh -huh. Which goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. This negative force coming on you, you got to be careful about yes. it. Yes. So that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord's of the Philistines saying, come up once more for he has told me all in his heart. So the Lords of the Philistines came up uh, to her and brought the money in their hands. So your thoughts. Uh, Oh man, <laughs> this one was like just wrapping me around and so much because I can remember uh, before I came into the faith, how we would as men, we would pray on the women that went to church mm. huh? and we would pressure them and we would throw money at them and everything Were you in the church? Pay bills. No, nope. you weren't in the church. Uh, uh And this just the same way. Samson is in a faith, but Delilah is right, in a totally right. different place. She's, she's, uh, 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 so question, what did you see about the woman in the church that was desirable? 
okay, they're supposed to be in some something good. You know, uh, uh, decent. did you want something that was good or did you want something uh -uh. to prove that it prove wasn't that good? it wasn't <laughs> that they can be they can be uh, tempted Pat. and taken. Yeah, yeah. There's no they're no different than, a than I am. It was a challenge. And yeah. so that's what the sinner does. That's what yeah. Satan is. He's got people to try us continually, try us to prove that we're no different. And what do they see? I'm telling you, when I came into the faith, I saw the same thing going on. What was going on in the world I was in? And like, it's no different. What's the difference? You know, and you got some people out there that will fight to hold on yeah, to yeah. their integrity. Right, right. There are some. There are some. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying everybody is weak, but Samson was a strong person. So if it can happen to a strong man, don't think that we're so strong it can't break us. You uh, um, you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And and so when I'm 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 reading this stuff, it's taking me back to where I was. I wanted to come out of that life so bad. I didn't know how. It it couldn't nothing that had happened to me humbled me enough to really say, man, this is really wrong. I need I need I need to do something different. My mouth would say it, but. Those same temptations would be there to say, oh, I got you in trouble again, you know, and there I am. I'm caught by my wife again. Doing the same thing that I, I said I wouldn't do, and I'm defeated until you find that you're in a place where you lost all. How many people out there have left off of this this first love, have cast this mm -hmm. love off and have lost it all? And you're out there thinking that there's no way you can get it back. Change that mindset. You have not gone too far from the arm of Yahweh. His arm can come and get you from wherever you've fallen. I am a living witness of that. I, I, I wasn't on this side. But I was on a side that was hearing the voice that you can never get over there. You can never get in that place. But look at me. There's nothing too hard for Yahweh. And that's what I'm seeing in, 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 in um, the example he's given me through Samson. Not through his actions, but through the fact that once I uh, rescue you, know that it wasn't an easy task. Know that it was hard. So don't give it up so easily. Make a person fight to get this treasure out of you. It's a treasure inside of us. Uh, well, here, you know what I'm thinking is in this this scenario here. Uh -huh. Yeah, what you're saying, I I get that, but I think in Samson's case, I don't think there was enough fighting he could do to ward it off. And, I, and the reason why I say that is because all of us have sometimes a very hidden weakness mm -hmm. that we haven't identified or maybe we have identified it, but we don't give it significance. And when you don't give something significance that you should give significance and attention to, that's your downfall. Exactly. And uh, the other day we were talking, and this is why I'm bringing it back, is mm -hmm. because you had correctly said he had a weakness for a, a particular woman. Mm -hmm. When the mother and father told him, why do you got to go to the Philistines? Are there not enough women in Israel that you can't have? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. are they all ugly? You know, <laughs> is there not one pretty one over here that you can go after? <laughs> My wife shaking her head at me like, oh, there he goes. You know, <laughs> But the point is, he had his eye on that one. Uh -huh. But she had an oppressing spirit. So when he made a covenant with her, you know, when you have a consummation of sexual agreement with another person, man or woman, um, there's a trade-off in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. They get a little bit of you and you get a little bit of them. But if they happen to have something in them that has more authority over you than you have over them, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And I think that's why that spirit was oppressing Samson so much because like it had control die. over him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to die. If he didn't give in to it, he was going to die. He's going to die. Mm -hmm. 
So like that junkie with the fix. Yeah, exactly. If I don't get this fix, I'm going to die. You're right. And she and he knew that she wasn't going to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. And she was going to put the guilt on the mm -hmm. Philistine guilt. You say you love me, but you won't tell me nothing. You know, mm -hmm. so the point here is, is that it's self-deception now. Mm -hmm. And Satan uses our self-deception or our denial about what a weakness we have. Why are we drawn to this so much? Mm -hmm. Why is it so compulsory? I've got to have that. You know, once you get into that realm, and it's for the wrong reason I'm saying, then we're asking for a whole lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And that becomes our downfall. Anyway, that's.